May I say a very good day to each and every one of you of the Federation, of our community of supporters, of our beautiful Ark of Nubia, and especially to all of the diaspora, descendant people. I asked to have this broadcast done today, which is being done from our palace residence here, which has just completed two weeks ago and everyone is still moving in. Because I think it's very important that I let my voice be heard before public announcements that will be done very soon and a posting that I will have done on the Federation main page but as well as on all of our official pages, including our Facebook pages, our art pages, the Art Nubia headquarters, and the other sites. To explain the why of the posting that will be done and the relevance for the diaspora descendant nations, I will go back a bit in history to come forward to the purpose of this. Many people, millions, and now hundreds of millions of those, the descendants of those people, we all know were taken from Africa, which has caused the first major change in this world and the world population. At times it seems that I do not say much in reference or with reference to the diaspora. It does not at all mean that I'm asleep. But sometimes to get things done, you've got to walk slow, especially when you want to walk fast. I hope that
program will be of relevance to many of you. disturbance, but I hope you can clearly hear me. We are very, very close to the airport, and we have at present
warm. Do we have the air cover on? I prefer to have the door open so we can get some more light. The diaspora nations are by far not often. Africa did not at any time exile her people from Africa. The Federation is not ignorant, nor am I, to the needs, the desire, the wants, and the rights of the people and descendants of the African diaspora nation. In 2000, we started the process after very lengthy discussions between His Majesty the King of the Nubian Nation and myself on step-by-step step addressing the issue of the diaspora descendants. I found it of absolute and utter relevance that it be dealt with. Thus in 2000 we started the protocol. In 1999, we started the revision and expansion of the Federation. In 2004, we were still busy preparing all that I found necessary before any decree or declaration can be made in matters of the diaspora descendants. Why? I think alongside recognition for the diaspora, we must as well, we had a responsibility to see that we can see to the address of the needs of the diaspora as best possible, alongside and integrated with the address and the needs of the kingdoms and the tribes of the throne as one unity. In 2006, the matters of the address of the recognition of the diaspora was placed before our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful family lives and tribes within the family region of Nubia and before the Nubian Council and Community as part one. It must be informed. In 2007, we had the first African Kingdom Nation Summit in Tripoli, which was very important because it was the first time in our modern history that we had so many of the kingdom nations born of Nubia all together to address the needs of the kingdoms within Africa, but equally as well of the descendants outside of Africa. It was a wonderful summit. And I think those are the most popular pictures that most will see because to me, of all the events, in my time as the Imperial Matriarch, nothing is more important to me than that first summit because it was addressing the issues, the matters, the needs and the requirements of the collective people, the unified people and not a part of the people or some of the people or one of the kingdoms or two of the kingdoms, but all of the kingdoms, nations and tribes of the line. To understand the formation of the kingdoms, every tree starts with a root. The root ancestral throne that it gave birth to the respective settlements, the then civilization, and then kingdoms and kingdoms and chiefdoms and all that was formed and all that became are born of the thrones of Ham Baunetje, his son Kush Horus Aham, Nimrod Nai Naama, and then down to the lines that formed Shiva. The inheritance of the collective thrones and the tribes that came with that formed the kingdom of Shiva, or the queendom, I should say, which is during the time of the ninth generation of Arinetja, which is Noah. 
one empire of many people, of many tribes, of many lines that was formed before Genesis was written. Slavery did not start 400 years ago. It started before. However, that does not mean that the recognition of the descendants should just be left undone. It is wrong. Therefore, in 2007, with the summit of the kingdoms, that I called as the matriarch of the ancestral mother throne of the queendom, which is referred to and known to as the throne of throne of the seven thrones. My first agenda and the first priority was the recognition and the needs of the diaspora nations wherever they are. First and foremost. After the summit of 2007, Therefore, the protocol was put in place for the development of gender in the advanced stage because that started more than 20 years ago, which is Project 7 Phoenix. It means the rise of the Phoenix. Within the protocol of that agenda was the simultaneous development of the 55 African nations where needed throughout all of the kingdoms and specifically based on the needed infrastructure to see to the sustainment, empowerment, and development of the people. With that, the simultaneous duplication of that agenda, not only to for the tribes and lines inside of Africa, but included the tribes of lines outside of Africa because we are one nation. One nation. There's a lot of history in Africa. A lot of secrets as well of the lines and the things that has transpired throughout the years. At times I see and I think, and I've said it before, the great almighty knows best why I have white hair from childhood. I guess it was in preparation for all the obstacles that I would face and the battles that would become on this agenda. Is this agenda? I guess as well my mother's had it before me because we've all had white hair. I choose no longer to wear the wigs. I'm tired of it. It's not time. It's, it's, it's not the time for that anymore. It's past. This is the start. I will be 50 next month. And it's the start of the other part of my reign. For me, it was very important before that time that the matters for the diaspora be put in place. Because it is time. After the start of the proclamation that was done and the utterance that was done before, the lines and the thrones of the kingdoms and the chiefdoms and the tribes at that time, we faced so much obstacles. It was incredible. I've had from each and every corner all the attacks you can think of in the world, but yet I am here. And I still smile because... far greater than I, who called each and every name that I have been called in my silent fight for Africa, for the respect of the African kingdoms, for the respect of the sovereignty of the African respective chiefdoms within their territory, for the respect of the national nations of Africa, for the respect and the co-equal right of the governments of the nations of Africa, and equally for the recognition and respect of the diaspora outside of Africa, and with that the rights to use the resources to our avail within Africa for the purpose of Africa and the address of the people of Africa, be they on the soil or off the soil of Africa, and by that I shall stand.
therefore they can continue. I was asked a few times, by what right, by what law, does the kingdoms of Africa have the right and the throne of thrones, the matriarchal thrones that we pour libation to at times, not conscious of the meaning that that ancestral line is going to the roots and not a part of the brand, but you're praying to the root. I've been asked, why do we think we have the right to decide of the recognition? I will tell you. Africa did not exile the children of Africa. We did not put them up for adoption. We did not say leave. No righteous kingdom will send away the people that form the nation and the foundation of the kingdom in their rule. They were taken. And granted of the hundreds of the kingdoms and the lines of the wonderful tribes of Africa, that one or two of those kingdoms in between did participate in this horrendous events within history that has destroyed so much. Please note, it was not the collected kingdoms of Africa. And definitely not the mother kingdom that gave birth to the respective independent kingdoms you see today. It was not. The children of the descendants of those people taken now are comprised of many nationalities in many nations around the world. One's nationality is not their root but it is the national, geographical, and political sovereign region where they have been born or where they chose to relocate to, to migrate to, or to live. It's not your genetic and ancestral roots. There's a difference. The children the descendants of Africa has the right of recognition. And regardless of who it may be, where it may be, in whatever nation, and whatever language, of whatever religious orientation, of whatever politics, of whatever throne, this throne retains the right as the throne of their grandmother to recognize the children of Africa. And if anyone else had wanted to do that, they had, I am sorry, 400 years the time to make that decision and have it done. In 2009, actually 2008, the decree together with the project planning to support the nations now expanded under that degree, was then practically ready, we shall say. We then formed the Ark of Nubia because I wanted to have in place a place where both the tribes from outside of Africa, once recognized, and the ones within Africa have a common shared place, no matter where they are in the world, that they can be connected to that of their kingdoms and their traditions and their tribe, where they can come and learn about whom they are. That was important.